To us, the smart mid smart cities more or less talking about two things: better service, more service, at lower cost. I think we are using uh, so so if you look down into the detail, it's all talking about more involved. So more equipment will be, more machine will be connected by different type of machine to machine technology. So more data will be provided, more service will be provided to the, to the citizen. And because of that, there will be more citizen get involved, accessing the information and also the services. And, and, and in return, they may also provide service to others. And it will be more intelligent in the sense that uh, more, as I said, I mean, more data will be connected in different format, including voice data, multimedia, video. And the information will be packed and correlated in a way that, I mean, more exact data will be sent to the citizen. And it will also be more efficient. So it's all about high capacity, uh, shorter, better response time, and also energy saving and also green, okay? So if you look at this chart, probably you can figure out that um, from, from the requirement that smart city application put on the networking layer, basically we can see it's all about surface extension in four different dimensions. First, what we call the wireline to wireless. So people are expecting the same service available on broadband, wireline broadband, also available on wireless. When they, so people are expecting the same surface while they are moving. Okay, that's point number one. The second dimension we can see is that the service available on what we call the trunked radio, or let's say things like uh, push to talk, or things like uh, walkie talkie, people are all ex also expecting the same service available on the wireless. Or we can rephrase the requirement that people are expecting multimedia services similar to the wireless or wireless broadband also available on you can run like walkie-talkie, okay? So these are the two major dimensions we can see. But if we add up the, the two dimensions together, then we can see people expecting network convergence. So what we can see here is actually that uh, LTE is definitely the, the technology we can see. So from bandwidth standpoint, 100 meg downlink, 50 meg uplink, this is good enough in most of the uh, uh, vertical industry application. And and also LTE provide better coverage, and also uh, the, the, what we call the latency is much shorter than the other technology. So, so LTE itself is basically ideal technology to fill the gap between the, the wireline technology and the traditional wireless technology. So ELTE actually is the platform that we have developed with all this in mind. So it's a basic, basically a platform with voice, broadband, a mobile, mobility, video, or integrated in, in, in the, you integrate, integrated together as a, a convergent network. And we also have the, the, the what we call the uh, trunk, video trunk, the trunk, uh, with, uh, the trunk voice in mind, and also the, 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 wire, uh, the wireline broadband in mind, okay? So this is, what we have done for Tianjin, I mean, Tianjin is one of the biggest cities in China with uh, over 15 million people. So what we've done to, what, what we have done for them is that actually we are in the implementation phase. Uh, so as of today, we have uh, more than 100 base stations installed uh, serving. I mean, this is a network uh, shift uh, built, by the, built by the government and provide service for different government agents like public security, like the city government themselves. So this is a shared network, shared LTE broadband access network built by the government serving different, different uh, 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 government agency. So this is a multimedia. Uh, it is um, uh, it's a partner, say the video surveillance and also the M2M connectivity. So we are now in the stage, as I said earlier, uh, we are now in the stage to develop the, the uh, in the stage of deployment. Uh, over 100 base stations has already been deployed, and ultimately it will be covered by, uh, it will have uh, in total over 200 base stations to cover the whole city. This is another interesting application we, 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 we do for uh, oil field in Norway. So in the past, I mean, they are using helicopter to take the to take the hard disk uh, from the drill platform to to land, but now we are providing uh, the, the solution that uh, with uh, with uh, TDD LT, uh, with LTE uh, covering uh, the, the, the the diameter talking about uh, thirty seven kilometer. 
So, so this is um, so so the jutting pack from actually allow online connect to connect to the uh, to the backbone network. And at the beginning, they have only provided data access, but they are also take, talking about they are now also thinking of using IPv2 services for that. So, so all these are basically application and other application we have on Metro and uh, in in Zhengzhou. And there are some other applications I mean, in every single sector that we can see. Okay. So Huawei uh, ourselves, I mean, we, get, we used to be um, focusing on carrier business, but that's two years ago, actually, we stepped into the enterprise. That's why we leveraged the solution we have on carrier and also put into to enterprise. So we are leveraging all the, all the, all the uh, 70,000 of R&D engineers to develop solution for the enterprise requirement. So you are welcome to visit our booth. And uh, so thank you very much for, for your time.